Oh, it's time for another math. Easy. So, we're trying to discuss the area of a region, but now look at a general uh, view of it and basically look at the definition slash formula of it. Basically, my earlier video, yeah, my earlier video I showed, I looked at this equation y equals uh, x squared, or fx equals x squared. So, basically, I wanted to get the area under this region and I broke it up into basically a bunch of rectangles and then took a limit. Yeah, so, so then I find the area of all these under this. And then I took a limit, and, I end, and the area ended up being 1 over 3 when you take the limit. Now we're going to use the same idea, but now for a general uh, region here, instead of this, this exact uh, x squared region. Okay, so if you have this, this general, um, yeah, just general function here, y equals f of x in this case here, and now we want to know what the area is under the graph from, uh, from this part. Let's call this one x equals a. And this side, x equals b. So you want to know basically the area under this graph here. This is a general one instead of using this exact uh, equation there. So now, the first thing you have to do is just similar to what above, break this up into just a bunch of rectangles. We'll just go and uh, undefined number of rectangles. So yeah, before that, let's just break this up into uh, some regions here. So we'll, we'll, let's just call this one x1. At this point here, let's call this x0. It's equals xa. So then if this was... Yeah, just a straight line there. So this is x2. We'll call this uh, this sum just uh, sum 1. So this or region 1. Let's call it with an s. This is going to be s2. And similarly, we're going to have, and they're all equally spaced. So all of them are going to equal to delta x here. And this is s3, etc. If you keep doing this on and on, all the way up to, let's say, now let's say if you're somewhere in here, this is just a, a, a pretend it's a straight line, but anyways. So, so when you're here, this is a general one. We don't know what number it is. We'll just call it xi. So then this one here is just going to be xi minus 1. Just like this one here. This one's x2. This is going to be x1. is xi minus 1. And etc. If you keep doing all the way up to here, you're going to get, well, this is, uh, we'll call this n number of regions. So this one's going to be, well, just n here. And then this last rectangle, or uh, just a region here, this one's going to be, x n minus 1. So it's always going to be this, this the same general pattern here. And this region here is going to be s i. This one is going to be s n here. So we're looking at the right side of each region here. It's x1, this is s1, s2, x2 here. So now the idea is to basically, the area under this is the summation of all of these regions, but now we want to approximate it by using rectangles for every one of these uh, regions here. But uh, before we do that, let's just, this delta x, uh, this is the width of each region. If they're all equally spaced and there's n of them, then it's just going to be equal to, well, b minus a divided by n here. So, because you, you, you just have the, the entire width here divided by the number of regions, you're going to equal, you, then you're going to have equally spaced width here. So this, this would be the delta x in this case. So now, okay, so now let's just approximate these with rectangles, so I, I, I drew the same thing over here. So now we're just going to, instead of using this region, because we don't know how to calculate this one, we're just going to draw a rectangle from each xi point. This one's 1. So we draw one across there. It's going to be across here, across there. It's going to be something like this, etc., etc. So this one's going to be over it. So we're doing it from the right side. See my earlier video I showed that you could do from the left side or from the right side, doesn't, doesn't matter. And then this one's going to be something like this. This is going to be something like this, etc. Yeah, so I drew a bunch of in here. So now you have a bunch of rectangles. This uh, doesn't look really nice. But anyways, uh, so now the idea, like in uh, earlier video, is basically if you sum up all these rectangles, you're going to get an approximation for an area, depending on how much rectangles you have. But And, and you know the height of each rectangle. So th this height here is just going to be f of x1, this one's going to be f of x2, and then when you go to a general one here, uh, this is xi, so we're just going to pick, yeah, this, this point here is going to be f of xi here. And then all the way here, this one's just going to be f of xn. And now, the, it's now you know the area of a rectangle is going to be the, length, the height, in this case, times the width. So then the R, I will call this Rn, which is just the sum of all of these rectangles, because we, we pick R because it's for meaning from the right side. I'll show you, you could also go from the left side, like from this one to this one, or from the center. So you're going to have Rn is going to equal to, well, f of x1, 
times it by delta x. And yeah, delta x is, is this value here. And it's going to be the same for all of these uh, rectangles here. So then this is the first rectangle. Now we're going to go to the second one. It's going to be fx2 delta x uh, and plus etc. etc. You're going to get the center one here. This is just the general one fxi delta x and then and then the, the plus etc. etc. all the way up to f of x n here delta x. And now you could write this as this is a sum. So you could write this in sigma notation like uh, you can see the video link below on sigma notation. Basically you could write this as equaling to is, uh, this is the sigma here and then i is equal to 1 uh, up to n and this is going to be f of x i so it just depends on whatever this index value is i delta x here so if this is 1 you're going to have f x 1 times delta x and then 2 you're going to then you're going to add the 2 and etc cetera, etc cetera. so this is what r n is equal to and now like I showed in my earlier video the limit as you go to basically infinite amount of uh, of uh, rectangles you're gonna get, yeah. You're you're gonna get the area. So the basically the area is defined as, but basically if f of x is continuous, then the area is defined as the limit as n or the number of rectangles goes to infinity of the sigma or the sum sigma notation i equals one, and f of x i times by delta x here. But it's, it's also important though, because remember this one, we're looking from the right end point in this case. But you could have picked, instead of that, you could have started from, well, x is 0 in this case. You could have gone from the left side instead, so every single x1 here. So you could have gone from there and, uh, and make the rectangles from, from this side here, etc. And these would, and then you could write the area, it would be the same thing, except now we're going to have limit and approaches infinity of delta and i equals 1 of f of x i minus 1 because this is from the left end point is the right end point or you could also have it as uh, like neither end point you could also just pick a random point here so let's call this one here instead of picking the end point we pick this one right here this is going to be x i star and or and then for every single one you're gonna have different picks so this one's gonna be or depending on yeah depending on if it's closer or better act more accurate or just pick the center oh this one's this is a this is a two here actually x2 is the second rectangle star and this this one as well here you're gonna have another x i something star so basically yeah you could have instead of uh, the actual endpoints you could just pick a random point in it so you're gonna have yeah something like this here so it'd be the same thing except now you're gonna have an xi star here and the reason you might pick something like this because it will converge faster to a point here the limit yeah instead of because it, it might be more accurate depending on how you go about doing this so this could be anywhere or the center center for example let's just go that's example so you can pick the center instead of the endpoints here now it's just to get an idea that uh, it, it basically gets closer and closer to the actual area. If you had n equals two rectangles, it's not going to be that accurate. So you're going to go pick from this side here. We're going from the right side. You're going to have something like this, and then this is going to be something like that. So this would be your area here, and this is not that accurate. But if you went something as n equals let's say ten, then if you have yeah n equals ten here, if you approximate by ten rectangles, you're going to have something like this. This is yeah, a bit bit off, but as you can see, it's, it's getting closer and closer here. And, and you can imagine the limit would, the area would just be the limit as there's infinite amount of rectangles. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go seven, eight, nine, and this is going to be ten here. Yeah, so as you can see, yeah, when, once you get to higher and higher, you're going to have exact numbers here. Now, so, yeah, so that's all for today. You can see in my other video on basically the examples that I was doing on the area this this area method here and I used Excel to basically approximate to a thousand on the equate on the y equals um, x squared curve and this so this is one I used in a pre previous example but this one is this is not that so anyways uh, that's all for today if you learn you can download these Dropbox uh, yeah these notes in the Dropbox link below in the info like always let me know if that doesn't work but that's all for for today I'll this is basically how you're gonna go about uh, basically deriving all your integral equations and, and what now I'll, I'll show in my later videos. Well, that's all for you learned and stay tuned for another math easy solution.